Hi everybody, welcome to Daisy. and in this video I'm going to give you some strategies and tactics for finding food, drink and water to help you survive for those first couple of hours um, when all you're thinking about is that next can of food, that next drink of Pepsi so you can then get enough resources together to then allow yourself to, uh, to move on and uh, really start your daisy adventure and especially with 1.09 um, it's become increasingly difficult to get through that first hurdle of that first hour now for me i think that the key to surviving in daisy and prospering in daisy is knowing where you are um, and this is where the i survive map comes in so if you don't know about it already do a Google search for Daisy I Survive Map, so that's I Z U R V I V E, or go to daisy.ginfo.gg. I'll put the links in the description down below, um, and you can log in, create an account, and that gives you the ability to move around the map. You can see the towns, you can see the villages, and within the towns and villages, you have all these icons. And what we're interested in really at the moment is things like the water pump icon. Incredibly important that that's going to help us survive so when you first spawn in on um, Chernerus as a new player um, you're along the beach so what you want to do to start off with is you want to eat the thing that you've got in your in your pocket that the game has uh, very kindly given you and then you, you don't want to start heading out inland yet unless you can see some houses or a big town uh, or city if you can then you can start you can start your search for food if you're not you want to just pick a direction and start heading along the beach and what you're looking for along the beach are the little boats you've probably seen them already sometimes they will have food and drink maybe they'll have a backpack on maybe they'll have something like that because your immediate priorities in daisy are food drink uh, some sort of sharp implements that you can use as a weapon um, and to open cans backpack and then better clothes and also to figure out where you are now as you're running along try and see if you can keep an eye on the road as well because what you're looking for are road signs now there's there's two kind of road signs there's these road signs you can see here at the top of the screen now these are the the, the town limits or the village limit signs so these tell you when you're going into a town or a village these are the white ones and the ones with the red uh, uh, line going from when you're leaving a town and then you have your direction ones so the top ones you'll you'll come across when you're coming up to a town or leaving it these ones these ones could be in the middle of nowhere but they tell you the directions to the next town and the distance which is very useful because if you know that um, Camino is one way and Perovo is another and uh, I can tell you what that one is uh, is another way you can then look at the map and you can then figure out say well actually I must be there that's where I must be and you can figure out where you are now if you're saying well wait a minute Rob this is all in Russian and when you go to the I survive map you know three valleys how, how do I do this well the I survive map is very very clever because what you can do is you so let's take this sign here um, so you look at it and you go oh, I don't know what that says but it's K-P-A-C-H so within the I survive map we can search and we can go K-P-A-C-H like so and K-P-A-H-C let's move that out of the way K-P-A-C-H-O is Krasno. So immediately we know where we are. And if you've created an account, you can put a tag down and then you know where you are. And once you know where you are, you can then, let's move to the coast. That's where you're likely to be. Once you know where you are, you can pick the nearest town or, or village. And you're looking specifically for water pumps. So let's use Nizno as an example here. So if we zoom in on Nizno, we can see the water pump signal now water pumps are very important in daisy because these are the only source of clean water that you can drink without worrying about getting cholera do not drink water from ponds uh, rivers those ornamental fountain and ponds you find in cities and towns lakes do not drink any of that stuff do not drink water from water bottles or canteens or cooking pots that you have found do not drink it only drink from water pumps so if you find yourself near a town or, or a village check the ice five map go there have a look around make sure there's no zombies and then start drinking the water if you're if you find a water bottle or a canteen um chances are it will have water in it first thing you want to do and always do this and this is a good habit to have all the way through the game 
take the item, take the water bottle to your hands. Don't put it in your backpack, because if, if you put it in your backpack or your pocket, if you've got other water bottles, it could get um, mixed up with those. To put it to your hand, look down and empty it. I don't care how thirsty you are, empty that water bottle, empty that canteen because if you drink it chances are you're going to get cholera and if you get cholera early on in the game you're dead anyway because you're not going to be able to find the antibiotics to, to treat it the tetracycline um so you, you're going to be dead so you know put it away just 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 empty it and then run to a water pump now when you get to the water pump the quickest way to drink from a water pump is to fill your water bottle in your canteen and then drink from that. Fill your water bottle in your canteen and drink from that rather than just drinking using your hand as a little cup. Obviously, if you haven't got those two things, then do that. And as I said before, cooking pots hold water as well. So you can fill up a cooking pot and you can you can drink from that, which is quite cool. Cooking pots are good. You'll be careful with cooking pots, though, because sometimes when you put them in your backpack, what happens is as you store stuff, as you pick stuff off, it puts it in the cooking pot. And if the cooking pot's full of water, it gets wet. So that's that's a bit odd. So anyway, so water pumps. Now, chlorine tablets. Now, if you find some chlorine tablets, what you can then do is if, if you do have a water bottle or you do have a canteen or a cooking pot, you can then fill that from a river. You can fill that from a pond or a lake or one of those ornamental um, ponds and you combine that with the water bottle um, and that will purify the water so on console you do that by you know have the water bottle in your hand go into your inventory uh, highlight the chlorine tablets the combined button will appear you press that it flicks out to the main game and you press whatever it says on the screen and it will combine them on pc you just drag the chlorine tablet over to the thing that's in your hand to the combined box and then it'll go to the screen and th then it does it that way that will then clean the water and then it is safe to use um, as you move on i would always recommend having some chlorine tablets on you um, but because it allows you to not have to rely on going to water pumps to, to get water and obviously on public servers water pumps especially around the coast people know that's where new spawns go because they're thirsty and that's where they might be waiting to kill you now the other drinks that you'll find lying around like the cola the spike the pipsy and the mad monk kvass you know you just drink them um and as far as how much you should drink or eat as you're going along you should drink or eat everything you find okay um that's good <laughs> you know i don't want eating rotten tomatoes or anything like that so when you find a drink of cola a can of cola just drink it when you go to the water pump um you really want to try and drink until your stomach is full now when you look in the bottom right hand corner of your daisy uh when you're playing daisy you'll see you know there's the health there's the temperature there's the blood uh there's food and there's drink now when when the food and drink ones are full that doesn't mean you're full it just means you're you, you're not feeling hungry you're not feeling thirsty what you want to do, especially when you're a fresh spawn, is when you're at that water pump, keep drinking until the stomach full icon appears. It looks like a little bag. As soon as that appears next to the uh, the other icon, stop drinking. You are then full. You then cannot take physically take on anything else. As long as you stop drinking straight away, you'll be fine. If you keep going, you start being sick, which isn't very nice. But that means you've taken on a lot. Same with eating as well. You know, so you, you keep eating and eating and eating till you're full because it's better to have stuff inside your body than trying to carry it. Because if you're trying to carry it, it has weight, which affects your stamina in the bottom left-hand corner, which means that you can't sprint for quite as long time. You can't melee for quite as long time. So as I say, when you come across these, uh, the, the canned drinks, just drink them. Um, or, you know, when, when you've got lots, you can, you can um, maybe keep some for later if you want. So... Let's talk about other food you might come across. So let's talk about apples and pears. So as you're as you're moving around as well is, if you see a tree that looks like a fruit tree, you know, looks like an apple tree or a pear tree, you know what they look like. Um, often they're in um, in Daisy, they'll they'll be in orchard, so the trees will be in lines. They'll be loaded up. Have a look round, because often you'll find apple, pears, and tomatoes just on the. Oh, sorry, apple, pears, and plums, um, and elderberries on the floor. Um, and if you do, put them to your hand and have a look at them in the inventory screen. Make sure they're not rotten, then eat them. Now, the plums are often dry, and I've eaten plenty of dry plums and never got ill from it. 
Often in the uh, apples always seem to be rotten at the moment. Pears seem to be okay. Um, mushrooms as well. If you go through a wooded area, you'll often see mushrooms. Again, put them into your hand. There aren't any poisonous mushrooms as far as I'm aware. But you do get mushrooms that are rotten and spoiled. And if it's rotten or spoiled, throw it away. Do not eat it. Um, also, you'll find mushrooms if you're moving through a field um, and there are uh, the, the hay bales. Run around them because you might well be lucky and find mushrooms. Now, another thing about mushrooms is, and this goes for fruit as well, like pears and apples. If you find one, there's probably some more in that area as well. So have a good look around. Okay, so let's let's move on to sort of canned goods. So when you're finding food in buildings, what sort of buildings will you find food in? So in Daisy, there's lots of different places, isn't there? Types of places. You know, we've got the coast area, we've got farm areas, we've got industrial areas, we've got military areas, we've got um, towns and villages. Food spawns in villages and towns this is where we're talking about you know canned food that sort of stuff so these are the places you want to be looking don't go to the industrial areas you know if you if you're looking around and it's lots of factories or warehouses um it looks like a cement works um a dock area don't go to those places you want to be going to the ordinary places um you know like, like we've got here so the pubs um churches sometimes the general stores um here we go what else we got small houses yellow houses large cabin houses small cabin houses elevated greenhouses you know the places that people live in this is where you will often find food the inns the red brick house um the big beige house that sort of stuff and i'll put links to all of this stuff down below but that's where you want to be looking don't waste your time going into industrial areas you know don't go looking through the garages you know the lockups for food because you're not going to find it um towns so fast food kiosks grocery kiosks you know the little kiosks you find um say in uh chernogorsk near the um you know, like in Chernogorsk, you've got the right-hand side, which is like the port area, and you've got the left-hand side, which is like the town area where there's the building with the aeroplane crashed into it. You know, there's loads of those little kiosks. Hunt through them, and you might find stuff. Uh, the news kiosks, um, the supermarkets, um, the gas stations, all that sort of stuff. If, if it looks like people would live there or sell food there, there might be a chance now what you have to remember though with daisy is that food is a rare item dean hall the guy who created daisy originally as a standalone mod for armor 2 said that when you come across a can of baked beans it should make your day you should be incredibly excited so that's how rare food is so don't get frustrated when you die you know if you die in the first hour it doesn't matter start again you've learned something you know play again play again because it's all about getting through that first hour, getting through that first two hours where you get enough resources. And once you've got enough resources to survive for, you know, say you've got a couple of cans of food you've eaten, you've you've got a belly full of water, then your next stage is really, you know, to get yourself a bag, get yourself some um, better clothes, and then you head inland. Because the way that loot works in Daisy is loot gets better the further inland you get. So it actually gets easier to find food. <laughs> as you move away from the coast funnily enough also because remember with 1.09 items stay on the servers for at least 48 hours um which means that if you've got on a busy server with lots of people chances are that um you know the coastal areas are going to be pretty much stripped bare pretty quick so my one of my strategies fairly early on is once i've got a little bit of food in me i've got water in me you know i found a bag um or, or even if i haven't found a bag is to get away from the coast and try and move inland because when you start finding stuff okay so we've talked about that we've talked about where to find stuff now obviously with cans <laughs> one of the big frustrations is opening cans so you know you'll have You'll have two cans of spaghetti and a can of peaches and you'll be starving to death and you can't open them. You know, you can't, unfortunately, you can't at the moment bash the can against the ground or the side of a tree to, to open it up. You have to use something to open it. Now, small stones, if you find two small stones, you can combine them together 
and that will make a stone knife which you can use to open a can can opener will open a can funnily enough just combine them the knife will open to the can now when you're using anything else apart from a can opener you will lose some of the contents of the can as part of the opening process but when you're starving to death that doesn't really matter does it the axe will open a can a screwdriver will open a can the wrench will open a can so all these things as you're running around you might think well what? i'm a new spawn why do i need a wrench you need it because you're gonna you can open a can with it the crowbar will open a can now you're going to lose a lot of the food when you use a crowbar to open a can as I'd imagine you would um so yeah so there's lots of things that will open now more and more things will <laughs> there's probably even you know things like the sword will like if you come across one of them on a modded server that will open a can um and there's probably other things i've missed out many many things open cans so if it looks at you it looks like you could bash a can, bash it with a can um uh, bash a can with it then, then get it right we've talked about stuff you can find in fields so um actually there's one so one of the things you also find is that the infected zombies these are sometimes have food on them as well um, and one of the things you can do is if you find a can but you haven't got a can open yet or any way of opening it use it as a weapon you, if you punch a zombie a couple of times in the head with a can it will kill it cans are one of the best melee weapons in the game and zombies can have food and drink on them now don't take on a load at once but there's nothing wrong with going around whacking a few on the head and you'll get them now as you're starting to move on and you, you've got away from, you know you've been through towns and villages and you're like right you've got an idea right i know where to find i want now to have food and drink um and uh and and you've got enough to survive but you, you know you want to take it to the next step in terms of surviving you might want to consider fishing uh, fishing is really cool you just find a fishing rod and a hook and dig up some bait um, or you can make an improvised fishing rod with a long stick and a rope and you can make ro rope by combining two piles of six bandages together and you have improvised rope um, if you kill a chicken or kill any animal you can use a knife to make an improvised hook and then you can go fishing you get fish and you can cook the fish so fishing's really cool i'll put a link in the description down below to fishing i won't do a video to talk about it too much hunting is really good um so you know you can go after the the animals i mean the, the chicken is probably what you'll start off with you'll just kill it with a knife now remember whenever you do any uh, cutting up of animals whether that be fish chickens bears wolves cows uh, goats or anything like that remember your hands will get bloody so if you're not wearing gloves before you touch the food to eat it you must wash your hands and you can wash your hands either by going to a river or a lake or you can wash your hands with um, a water bottle or a canteen or a cooking pot and also obviously if you do catch a fish if you do catch a uh, chicken or a pig or whatever don't eat it raw <laughs> you know you've got to cook it but basically with hunting you can go around with a gun shotgun or a rifle and you can you know you can shoot the sheep you can shoot deer um and the meat you get from the larger animals especially like the fat you can get and the steaks is full of calories it's really really good once you've cooked it and it will keep you going for a long 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 time and what happens is once you get to that stage of the game when you are hunting um, and you have got you know uh, a fair bit of, of food you don't think about food very often you can go for like like an hour of exploring and base building or doing whatever you're doing pvp without having to think about food and drink it doesn't have that minute to minute stress that you have in early game um, cooking is very very important oh, again i'll put a link down but again if you if you catch fish if you cut a chicken up if you catch a wild boar and cut it up you know you'll need to cook it and you can cook it's dead easy to create a fire and and, and cook stuff um as we said we've talked about the infected uh, earthworms as well if you get very very desperate you can dig earthworms up i think you can even dig them up with a knife now um but they don't give you many calories you can get food poisoning off them if you're eating them raw um and they're really best used as um uh bait you know for your fishing hook and i guess finally human steak if you, <laughs> i've i've never done this okay in all the years of playing daisy if you get really desperate though 
and you come across a dead human, not a dead zombie, a dead human, or you kill someone, and you have a sharp object to cut them up, you can make human steaks. If you eat human steak, obviously if you eat it raw, there's a chance you're going to get food poisoning anyway. If you cook it though, there's a chance you'll get brain prion disease, um, which is untreatable and your character will laugh uncontrollably every now and again so they're going a bit nutty and also when you try and aim down sight with your gun your character will be shaking so i would avoid it but there are cannibals out there you can eat humans so there we go i know that was a bit of a long video but hopefully it will give you some tactics and strategies for staying alive for the first hour um, and then, then they move on. So as I say, for me, the key is the I Survive map. Um, there's a few other maps out there, so you can use them as well. Knowing where you are, making your way to the nearest sort of town or village to find the water pump to fill up on water, and then making sure you just hit, you know, those domestic properties. You know, don't get bogged down with the industrial stuff. It's just domestic houses you want to be looking through for food and drink. And you can look through 20, 30, 50 houses and not find something. But Daisy will get some, get you there, and as soon as you can, as soon as you you know you've got food in you, you've got drink in you, maybe you found a backpack, you know, you've got a spare pair of shoes, that sort of stuff, you've got a knife. Head inland, because things get much much easier as soon as you head inland. I mean, you've got to cover bigger distances to go from town to town to village to village, but what you'll find is these towns and villages have more stuff in them, and that's also when you'll start coming across animals. Um, you know chickens and things like that you can then cut up you can then cook and then you have lots of calories so there we go my beginner's guide to food and drink on day z how to survive hopefully it's been useful if it has hit the like button if you want to see more of the same press subscribe and of course i'll see you again soon